Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. Welcome to those who are with us online. This is the day the Lord has made and given to us as a gift for Sabbath keeping. Our scripture lessons for today explore that theme of Sabbath, what is appropriate uh, for the Sabbath. We gather on this Sabbath day to celebrate the presence of God with us and the gifts of God for our life and God's power to restore what is broken uh, and, and to renew us in wholeness of life. As you came in, you may have noticed, or if, when you're going out, you can notice that uh, next to our secondary baptismal font in the rose powder, there is a tree planted by streams of water. There is an image of a tree there, and it does not have leaves on it. The image of the tree will be used in our worship next Sunday on the Red Rose Festival celebration. We will be gathering around the theme of planted, nourished, growing, and you will be asked to think about people in your lives uh, who have nourished you in faith. So it may be parents, grandparents, Sunday school teachers, friends, uh, and we're going to uh, list those people on the leaves and place them on the tree so that we can indeed be uh, like that tree planted by streams of water, uh, planted, nourished, and growing. Next Sunday, uh, we, we will look forward to gathering in that way. So our worship next Sunday for the Red Rose Festival is at 10.30 in the morning. There will be a time for fellowship and refreshments before the service as well as after the service. And you are most welcome to come and bring a friend. Uh, we celebrate what God has done for 250 years and God's presence with us leading us into God's holy future. On Tuesday, June 11th, uh, for the Tuesday small group, we are reading the book Beachdale Road, where mercy is more powerful than murder. Uh, and you are welcome to join us for that conversation, exploring themes of forgiveness and mercy uh, and the presence of evil in our world. If uh, anyone is interested in having a copy of the book, I do have one extra copy for sale. So uh, welcome on June 11th, 1.30, for that conversation. Our worship today will include prayers for healing and anointing with laying on of hands. Uh, and you'll be welcome to come forward at the appropriate time if you are desiring to be prayed for in that way. We begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God knows our needs before we ask, and in our asking prepares us to receive the gift of grace. As we worship this morning, let us open our lives to God's healing presence and forsake all that separates us from God and neighbor. Let us be mindful not only of personal evil, but also of our communal sins of family, class, race, and nation. Let us confess to God whatever has wounded us or brought injury to others, that we may receive mercy and become for each other instruments of God's grace. Let us confess our sins together. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, your face is hidden from us by our sins, and we forget your mercy in the blindness of our hearts. Cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires. In reverence and humility, may we draw near to you confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. 
Christ prays for us. And anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, throughout time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole all that you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power, restore us to wholeness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The first reading today is from the fifth chapter of Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. <clears throat> Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outreached arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> we'll read 
responsively Psalm 81. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound to the Lord. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon, and at the full moon, the day of our feast. For this is the statue of Israel, the law of God. God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph, going out over the land of Egypt, where I heard a voice I did not know. <coughs> you called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. <clears throat> there shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. The second reading is from the second book of Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of <clears throat> in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible to our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the second chapter. Glory One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart. And he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. 
Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are digging back into the Gospel of Mark this Pentecost season. And from the beginning of this Gospel, as early as chapters 2 and 3, Jesus is stirring up controversy and opposition. While Jesus went about teaching and healing, helping and supporting those in need, some people found reasons to argue and to dispute with him. Even when Jesus went to the synagogue to pray, there were those watching him closely, watching to see what he would do so they could cause trouble for him and maybe cause trouble for anyone involved with him. So as Mark sets the scene for us in the synagogue in today's gospel reading, He's setting us up to recognize a certain tension in the air, all eyes on Jesus, with those ready to accuse him lurking in the background. And out of the crowd of worshipers, Jesus calls forth one man to come forward and to stand in front of everyone else. I wonder what the man with a withered hand thought when he was singled out to come forward. If that man was like many of us, he probably didn't feel all that comfortable as the center of attention, perhaps did not feel comfortable standing between Jesus and his critics, his useless hand, vulnerable and exposed. Maybe he felt a surge of anxiety when Jesus summoned him forward. Maybe he thought, oh no, what have I done? Maybe he looked around and saw there were others in the synagogue that day with hands and joints and bodies knotted or withered with pain or age or disease. Other people who might have been called forward. Maybe he thought, why me? Maybe the man didn't have time to think but simply heard those words come forward and heard a summons of hope. And so he went forward just as he was, his hand as it was. I have a friend who has a withered hand and often holds it like this, bent and closed up. And that man heard Jesus say, stretch out your hand as if he was being commanded to reach out to touch the hand of God, as if Jesus wanted him to open his hand to receive all the good gifts God wanted to give him. Stretch out your hand. And since God's word is a living word, a word for all times and places, Jesus' two commands in the gospel echo forth across the ages and unto today. Come forward, Jesus says, and in me know God's will for wholeness and life. Stretch out your hand, Jesus says, and receive God's grace. Come forward, he says, to meet forgiveness and hope. Stretch out your hand and receive bread broken, wine poured out, my body nourishment for the journey. There are a number of things that might have made this a different story for the man with the withered hand that day. Any number of things that might have gotten in the way of that healing miracle. He might have been influenced, for example, by the scowling faces and hostile attitudes of the Pharisees. Or he might have been so uncomfortable with the thought of standing in front of them, doing what they thought was a violation of religious laws and traditions, that he declined Jesus' invitation to come forward. He could have said, thank you, Jesus, but I don't want to offend anyone, much less the God who commands us to keep the Sabbath. Could we do this tomorrow? The tensions and the conflict in this story are real, and they highlight the questions at stake when Jesus comes to town and into our lives. What social pressures, what human rules, 
What unspoken assumptions get in the way of our own healing, saving relationship with the God of love and life? What noise, what busyness, what internal voices or external distractions drown out the voice of Jesus so we do not even hear him say, come forward, stretch out your hand, be made whole? That day in the synagogue, it might have been the case that that man's private fears kept him from responding to Jesus. He might have been afraid to stand there vulnerable and so in need of healing in front of all those people. He could have said that he wasn't worthy of Jesus' call, and he might have suggested that Jesus pick someone else. He might have declined to stretch out his hand because in that position he could be reprimanded by the Pharisees with a wrap across his knuckles. Or in the end, maybe that man could have had plans, other plans that day. He might have been too busy or preoccupied to attend worship. He might have had other things to do, so he never showed up at all. So many things can get in the way of spending time with Jesus. There is something about Jesus, though, something about the words he speaks, the mercy he shares, the love he embodies. There is something about Jesus that summons us to pay attention and to see in him compassion and grace. There is something about Jesus that has the power to overcome our fears and excuses and points us to a love that heals and saves. That day in the synagogue, the air was thick with tension between Jesus and the religious authorities. Now they were all there to keep the Sabbath, they were all there to worship God, but there was tension in the air because they had different starting points in how they approached our God. The starting point for Jesus' life and ministry was his intimate knowledge of God's will for healing and fullness of life. His critics, the Pharisees, were intent on keeping the letter of the law. They were intent on fulfilling their religious duties and obligations. That was the foundation for their relationship with God. Now, the Pharisees were not wrong in their commitment to keeping the Sabbath. They were not wrong in their desire to live in ways that please the Lord. But Jesus rubbed up against these religious leaders because they were so intent on keeping the letter of the law so intent on doing their duty that they missed the bigger picture, that our lives of faith are a grateful response to God's love and grace. Jesus' opponents had lost sight of Sabbath as gift, Sabbath as time with God for rest and renewal, Sabbath as opportunity to give glory to God, Sabbath as joining with God to bring about healing and wholeness in a broken world. So again, today's gospel reminds us that God's love made real in Jesus has a tendency to rub up against our traditions and assumptions. God's love made real in Jesus disrupts our easy answers and widens our embrace of others. Jesus says, let this be the starting point for faith. Come to me, he says. Stretch out your hand and see what God can do. The image of that man with his useless hand standing in front of the worshiping community in today's gospel reminds me of an African-American spiritual. There that man stood, bold or hopeful or foolish, enough to respond to Jesus when Jesus summoned him to come forward. And there he stood in front of everyone in need of healing and hope. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And here's the good news. 
the man who stood there, did not stand all alone. Jesus stood with him, and Jesus offered an answer to prayer. In our Old Testament reading today, I was struck by this line. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. God is always stretching out a mighty hand to free us from our captivity to sin and to lighten the loads of guilt and shame and fear we carry. God is always stretching out a holy hand to lead us forth in forgiveness and freedom. And Jesus came and lived among us to show us God's will for healing and wholeness in this sin-scarred, withered world. Jesus went about teaching and healing and arguing re religious leaders to show us the wide expanse of God's liberating, life-giving love. Jesus came and lived among us and stretched out his arms in love to show us God's compassion for a weary people standing in the need of prayer and all the help we can get. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And Jesus says, come, stretch out your hand and see what God will do. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. 
Let us pray. God, our creator, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise and bless you, Lord. God, the Son, you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We praise and bless you, Lord. God, the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise and bless you, Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise and bless you, Lord. Lord, grant your healing mercy to all who are sick, injured, afflicted, or carrying heavy burdens that they may be made whole. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant to all who are lonely, anxious, or depressed a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant to all who minister to those who are suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore to those in distress soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, Lord of life. Sustain and support those who seek your guidance and lift up all who are brought low by the trials of this life. We pray for those we know who are standing in need of prayer today, those on our prayer list, and John, and Beth, and Jordan, others we name aloud and in our hearts before you. Hear us, Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, Lord of life. You are the Lord who does mighty wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, Lord, is the well of life, and in your light do we see light. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Gracious God, in baptism, you anointed us with the oil of salvation and joined us to the death and resurrection of your Son. Bless all who seek your healing presence in their lives. As we seek to live in faith and hope, draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that following Christ, we may know the power of his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Friends in Christ, I invite those of you who wish to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. Receive this oil as a sign of forgiveness and grace and healing in Jesus' name. May you be strengthened.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. God of mercy, source of all healing, we give you thanks for your gifts of strength and life, and especially for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have health and salvation. Help us by your Holy Spirit to feel your power in our lives and to know your eternal love. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also Let us share a word and a sign of peace with one another. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, our good Samaritan, who tends the wounds of body and spirit with the oil of consolation and the wine of hope, the Son of righteousness, who raises us to life on his healing wings. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Eternal God, all creation sings your praise. Sun, moon, and stars reflect your glory. Mountains, lakes, and forests declare your wonders. With our ancestors in faith, with disciples and followers from generation to generation, we trust your goodness, celebrate your blessings, and in the mystery of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we marvel at your reign come near. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With hearts full of memories and hopes, we break this bread and we share this cup, remembering the death and resurrection of Jesus and his promise to be with us always. 
At this table, make us your body. Form us to be people of justice and peace. Fill us with gratitude and generosity that we may bear the fruit of love in word and deed. Praise to you, author of creation. Praise to you, O beloved one. Praise to you, O giver of all good things. Praise to you, blessed and holy trinity, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered as one in the spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus is host at this table. He says, come forward, stretch out your hand. Taste the goodness of the Lord. All is ready. Come to the table.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.